Hi, welcome to everybody. Uh, it's a great honor to have uh, Professor uh, and also Pranav. Uh, Pranav will uh, be moderating today uh, and he'll be introducing the uh, Professor. Uh, a few words on Pranav. Uh, most of us uh, who have been born in 60s and went to Palitna when they were 20, 40 years before, uh, I am one of them. And uh, I had an opportunity to meet uh, uh, Pranav's great grandmom called Kanak Ben. And Kanak Ben was, now Palitna is different, but those days, 40 years back, I still remember. Uh, Kanak Ben was only uh, 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 one who was running the entire uh, 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 Rasoda, what it is called, for uh, all the Marsas. And she has also been. Uh, those days very visionary to help the Dolivalas for the very mere amount uh, to help with the food. And she was one of the most popular uh, figure those days. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, pray, um, uh, uh, remember her uh, of my memories. And it's, it's my pleasure to have Pranav, who is related to that great family uh, 40 years back. And Pranav is also my alumni in Harvard Business School. I'll hand it to Pranav to uh, take it over. Thank you, Pranav, for accepting, and thank you, Professor. Hello, Pranav. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Great. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor, uh, for joining us and uh, telling us more about Jain history and the importance of uh, women in it. Um, you know, Professor Hampa is actually, uh, you know, very learned a scholar. Uh, he has uh, been published in many books, uh, which have been translated into several languages uh, and has also been given many awards from around the world. So the nature of the talk will be, we'll uh, ask him a few questions about uh, women, uh, the, some of the queens that have dominated South India, uh, learn about a university uh, that is uh, all Jain University in Tamil Nadu. Uh, and uh, please uh, feel free to ask uh, questions uh, on the chat. And uh, periodically, I'll take some questions from the chat uh, and ask the professor as well. Uh, so Professor Hampana, the first question to you is that, you know, historically, the Jain institutions are very male dominated, right? So we see Acharyas, we uh, see a lot of men uh, in uh, positions of power, but there are far more women who are nuns. Uh, there are far more women uh, who are actually following this sincerely. So are there some examples of, you know, what is the historically, uh, how was this? Was it always this case? Or uh, if you can give us some examples of the role of women in Jainism, that would be great to hear. Thank you, Pranav. You have given me an opportunity to give some very important historical details about the role of women in shaping the destiny of our country, of our religion, and of our culture. You said our history is dominated by male, you know, but I tell you the reverse is true. Our history is dominated by the contribution of women, you know, Wherever you look and wherever you turn the pages of history, you'll be surprised to see how it is studded with the gems of the celebrities, women celebrities, you know. You asked me a direct question about the earliest university that was started in Tamil Nadu in the North Arcot district, present day North Arcot district in Tamil Nadu. In the, ninth century towards the end of ninth century. That was the period when one of the very important uh, imperial dynasties called the Rashtrakutas, they were ruling. For 200 years, the South India, it was an imperial dynasty, very important dynasty, and their contribution is there in every walk of life. Coming to the topic of starting a university at a place called Vedal, V-E-D-A-L. It is the North Arcot district, Vandava Stalik. It is the Taluka place, you know. There, 
and the university vice chancellor was Kanakavira Kurathiyar. Kanakavira Kurathiyar. Kanaka is gold. Kanakavira Kurathiyar. It is a Sanskrit borrowed word. Kurathiyar comes from the Sanskrit word Guru Stri. Guru Stri, the woman teacher. In the Tamil language, it becomes Kurathiyar. In Karnataka, we call as the you no know, the Samanis. It is like some something like that. And there, uh, nine hundred students were studying in the ninth century. Just imagine, one thousand one hundred and fifty years ago, the university was established by one of the uh, lady monks. In uh, North India, we call them Samanidis. In South India, we call them as Sadvijis. It was started in the year 885 by uh, that Gunakirti Bhattara. He was the chief of the institution, the monastery. In Tamil Nadu, the place where Jainism is very important is called as Palli. Holy, you know, holy means it is Jain center. It is something like the Jaina Matha, Jaina Ashram, where the Gunakirti Batara was the chief and his disciple Kanakavira Kuratiya, she was the vice chancellor, where 900 students were studying. Just imagine in the ninth century, all Jains, it was exclusively for the Jain. Uh, girls and most of them were nuns, nuns of that period. And once it so happened, when there are 900 girls, well, um, we can expect them to quarrel also. And a dispute, a, a dispute was there, and there were two groups um, 400 girls, one group, one batch, they took one side, the other side, 500. But Kanakavira Kuratiya, she interfered, and then it, the problem and the dispute was amicably settled. And what were the subjects that were taught there? It was the canons, Daina Agama literature was, we see, that was the main topic, main, sub, main syllabus for the students. And then the king, the ruling king of that period, Rajaraja Chola, and um, his wife asked him to donate. Therefore, uh, the king agreed. Usually what happens in the family is when the a lady of the, uh, chief lady of the family may be mother or wife, uh, well, we prevail on them. And the queen told the king to give some donations, endowments, gifts, dana dattis, to maintain that university and the king agreed and he donated several lands, tax-free lands. There was no tax levied on that because it was for a promoting education. And Jainism was in a very important early religion throughout the length and breadth of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra, in all these southern states from uh, 3rd century, 4th century BC onwards, up to 12th century, Jainism was an important religion. And coming to the topic of the women, well, we are we should be proud of the uh, that institution where 1,000 years ago, an institution exclusively, an educational institute was very, very well organized. And the monks and nuns were there. They were on the teaching staff also. So uh, this uh, is the first, the earliest university in the history of the world. I, I, it speaks a lot about how importance is given for the education to women. For that matter, as far as our legend goes, our mythology, the first Tirthankara of the uh, present period, Adinata Tirthankara, Rishabhadeva, Purudeva, he first invited his two daughters and then Brahmi and Sundari, first he gave education to them, then he gave education to sons. 
So that shows that our Adinata Tirthankara was the first Tirthankara who gave us a model how to educate in the house, in the family, first for women, first for daughters. Very interesting. Uh, what is the status of the university now, Professor? Is it still functioning and how many students are learning there? Hello, please repeat. Uh, what is the status of the university today? Is it still functioning? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, well, uh, gradually what happened was the kings, very important, uh, th that was the period when throughout the country, kings were supreme. Well, the king, whatever religion he follows, and his subjects were following the same religion. But it, unfortunately, the Jaina king, who was very important, Mahendra and other kings in the 8th and 9th century, they were converted to Shaivism. And Shaivism became an important religion. And the king, he, well, he promoted the other religion. And Jainism was um, not it became a secondary religion in the state. Therefore, from 9th and 10th century onwards, th that was the period of deterioration as far as the history of Jainism is concerned. But despite all that, Jainism sustained because it has an innate spiritual strength. So throughout, Take away. So throughout we see how in India, several states, Jainism became an important religion, but because of the lack of the royal patronage, patronage is very important for the survival of any religion. Therefore, Jainism, it lost the patronization, the royal patronization. So gra gradually, uh, well, uh, the clouds and um, it enveloped and the history of Jainism, well, had to, there was a setback. There was a setback for the progress and prosperity of Jainism. Uh, therefore, coming to this question, uh, that university did not prosper for a longer period. Uh, professor, uh, I would love to, you know, understand the different perspectives of uh, the Shwetambar, the Digambar, and the Yapaniya sect on this question of, you know, whether women can achieve liberation directly or they have to go through the cycle of rebirth and be born as a man before they attain salvation. The question of liberation is there. It is a burning question. Even today, a lot of debate is taking place whether the woman in the very birth can attain liberation or not is the important question. The pivot, that's the pivot, you know. But it has wider dimension. It has the other side of it. In the 2,500 uh, or 3,000 years history of Jainism, well, sectarian difference, it, it started from the second century, it started, and Shwetambar and Digambar, as far as the dogmas and the philosophy of Jainism is concerned, there was some difference of opinion, and the Acharyas fell apart, and then, see, in Shwetambar, women are capable of attaining the liberation in the very birth. In Digambara, it is not so. Not that they are against the uh, womenhood as such, but the cloth, the naked, uh, that, that, that's the question. You see, um, the Digambaras, they thought uh, women, cannot become naked and therefore um, in that birth, it is not possible for her to attain the liberation. But when the soul takes the body of the, the man, then it is possible to attain the liberation. But this is not the very important question from a wider angle because, you know, generally we think Shwetambars are only 
predominantly found in the north, not in the south. It is not true because based on the inscriptional evidences, I should bring to the kind notice of those who are listening my uh, talk, you know. Shwetambars Shwet were there in Karnataka also in the 5th century, 1600 years ago, when the southern part of Karnataka was ruled by the one of the earliest uh, um, dynasties called the Banavasi Kadambas. Kadamba kings were ruling like Mayura Verma, Ravi Verma and others. And in the 5th century, the Ravi Verma and other kings of the Banavasi Kadambas, they endowed, they gave the Dattis the gifts of land and other gift of gold and other things to Shwetambaras, Digambarasa, Digambaras and Kurchakas in 5th century. They were in a good number. That just imagine when the king wanted to patronize these religions and Shwetapatas are the Shwetambaras, those who are wearing the white cloth. They say Shwetapata. Pata means the cloth. Shweta is white, I know. So the Digambaras and Shwetambaras and the Kurchakas and the Yapaniyas, they were all living together in the 5th century in the coastal area, coastal Karnataka, which is connected to the Goa and Mumbai area, Gujarat and other places. Therefore, during the 5th century, there was three important sects in Jainism. One is Shwetambara Shwetapata, the second is Digambaras and the third was Yapaniyas. Yapaniyas was a golden link between, between the two extremes of the Shwetambara and Digambara. Shwetambara and the Yapaniya, Yapaniyas, as far as their physical appearance is concerned, they were naked, they were Digambaras. But as far as the principle they propagated is concerned, it was the Shwetambara principle. So Shwetambaras liked the Yapaniyas, but disliked because they were Digambaras, naked. And Digambaras liked the Shweta, this Yapaniya sect because they were naked. And the Digambaras disliked them because they were following the principles of Shwetambar. And Yapaniya, they were the golden link between the two extremes of the Shwetambara and Digambara. What were the principles propagated by the Yapaniyas? Yapaniya sect flourished in the southern region in the border of Maharashtra, Andhra, Kerala, and predominantly in Karnataka. It flourished for 1000 years from 200 AD to 1200 AD. And for two, 1000 years it flourished. And the principle they propagated is uh, based on the Stridam Tadbave Mukshaha. Well, women are capable of attaining moksha, liberation in the very world. Being women, they can attain liberation. Stridam Tadbave, Tadbave in the very world, Mokshaha. Then, uh, Parashasane Mokshaha, those who come from the other sects and join the Jaina sect, they are also capable of attaining Moksha. So, and then Sagrantana Mokshaha, those who wear clothes, they are also capable of attaining the Moksha. So, look at this principle, are very near to the Shwetambara principle. And they constructed hundreds of temples throughout the southern India in between 200 AD, 2200 AD. Yapana, the influence of Yapaniya was very much, but because the Shwetambaras and the Gambaras opposed the Yapaniyas, gradually it vanished. Vanished once for all, not to recover again, not to come back. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. That's uh, very interesting to, you know, hear about this uh, bridge sect that uh, was trying to straddle the two principles of the extremes, uh, but eventually uh, didn't get uh, enough of a following. Uh, my next question, Professor, is, you know, over the several centuries, how has the role of women changed? I mean, do you see any inflection point, for example, before Bhagwan Mahavir and after Bhagwan Mahavir? 
or any point in time, if you could talk about how has the role of women changed in the history of Jainism uh, and what were those changes and why were those changes happening uh, would be great to hear. See, this is an important question relevant to the modern society also because women are highly educated. The literacy in Jainism, as far as the census of 2000 and 2010 are concerned, it is nearly 90, staggering 96%. In olden days, it so happened that the Christians and uh, Buddhists, women were, and literacy was on the top. But in the recent years, we find that literacy is more in Jainism and women are very progressive and highly literate. And during the period of Mahavira also, that was your uh, pranav, your question. And during the time of Mahavira, women were not treated properly. And Mahavira considered this and he said, prominence should be given to the women. Therefore, he allowed women also to become samanis. Whereas Buddha is contemporary, see, Buddhism and Jainism are two important religions, very radical in their th thinking. And then these two important religions, uh, as far as the place that they gave in the structure, in the hierarchy of the principal philosophy, as far as that is concerned, Buddha said women are not allowed to join the monkhood. And his wife, Yashoda, she has to prevail. And well, a lot of discussion took place. And in the last years of his uh, preaching, Buddha agreed to allow women into the fold of the monkhood. Whereas Mahavira is contemporary, from the beginning, he gave a lot of importance, so much so in the community wise, in the monkhood also, women were in the forefront. They were given a lot of importance because they were highly progressive, they were highly educated, and they had the strength sufficient to sustain and give equal importance to the education, to the culture, and to the rituals, as well as the rituals. No, if women did not take place, uh, did not take you know, the uh, main role of encouraging uh, the ism, Jainism, Jainism would not have sustained. It is the women who are always in the forefront help, and because of their help, because of their uh, prominent role, Jainism flourished. Look at the history of the temples, wherever the temples were constructed, and, and look at the uh, feeding the monks. See, women were always in the forefront. They were the leaders of the family and of the monkhood also. And I, I will give you know, one, one example. Haribhadra Suri is one of the greatest Acharyas and the greatest, you see, um, writer, greatest poet. He has written very many books, Haribhadra Suri. And Haribhadra Suri was a Brahmin by birth. And he was a pundit, he was a scholar. He, said he was very proud of his learning and scholarship. And he said, I you challenge, if anybody defeats me in the debate, I will become his disciple, I will become his student. And Yakini Mahatara, a Jaina nun, he was a great, she was the uh, Saraswati, she, she was the goddess of learning, and she was one of the important ladies in the 8th century, 1200 years ago in Gujarat, and she defeated that um, uh, Haribhadra Suri. And Haribhadra Suri, he became her student, her disciple. He changed from Brahmanism to Jainism. He accepted Jainism, gave up his Brahmanism, and he called himself as Yakini Mahattara Sunu. I am the son of Yakini Mahattara, that great Sadhviji, 
that great samaniti that was the learning that was the scholarship so look at the history of any state throughout the history um, we find uh, the women uh, playing a very important role in shaping the destiny of the state of the region of the religion of the culture i can give a lot of um, instances coming to the coastal line of karnataka you know you refer to the rani chennabaira devi she was a queen very many queens were there in coastal area from during the period of uh, vijayanagara kingdom uh, where for 200 years vijayanagara kingdom was an important kingdom in the south you know during that period we we see so many queens uh, ruling uh, very many important parts of uh, the coastal region karnataka patkal honnavara haveri and other regions called uh, the goa region and then other parts called the gerasappa these were the regions that were ruled by the jaina queens channa devi ruled for 15 years as queen and then uh, padumala devi mahamandaleshwari there were the mahamandaleshwari the important queen of the area and padumala devi ruled for 10 years whereas this queen channa baira devi you have seen gerasappa in the gerasappa number of temples are there chaturmukha basudi parshunatha basudi nevinatha basudi entire 1 km a number of temples are there on the banks of the river sharavati and this chennavaira devi rani chennavaira devi from 1550 to 1605 nearly 50 years she was the queen who ruled the entire coastal area batkal honnavara goa hardwali gerasappa and this sangeetapura all this area she was the queen she ruled for 50 years very efficiently she encouraged art architecture culture and then religion literature everything and the very important thing is that she was the first queen in indian history who was um, exporting in the export business she was the chief in throughout india she was the first lady that she was exporting the sambara items particularly the black pepper she was the portuguese in the history of the portuguese they have mentioned her name and they have given her a title called the queen of black pepper because the black pepper was important in the 16th century in the europe people were dying because of typhoid for the typhoid this uh, items uh, prepared out of the black pepper was very important it was the medicine it was ramabana and uh, it worked wonders therefore 500 tons at a time 500 tons of black pepper was exported and the black pepper grown in her country was very important because it was very big in size and very important in the quality and the entire europe they were giving six months advance to her that the import the black pepper grown in her country should be imported to them only europe only and the portuguese people you see they were um, very very uh, sick Um, not good people but they wanted to take away the importance of the on the uh, see uh, trade in the trade world the arabs were there the competition was there it is the britishers and uh, the other people they came later the dutch and the british in the beginning in the 16th century it is the portuguese who entered first In, in, into india and they were doing the business and they were bringing the horses from the arab country and supplying to the vijayanagara kingdom and the vijayanagara kingdom and the king krishna devaraya and others they gave shelter to the portuguese people and taking the disadvantage or the advantage of the uh, patronship of the king and i extended to them the portuguese people wanted to dominate the business and uh, well 
um, the queen Chanabaira Devi, she did not allow. And therefore, what I wanted to focus is how Jaina women, their life was not confined to the four walls only. Their life was not confined to the kitchen only. They were taking active role in all walks of life, whether it is business, coming to the war field, you see, they were in the forefront. They were leading the army. They were fighting. Ahimsa Paramo Dharmaha is there, but it should not come in the way of saving the country. Independence is very important. When the Portuguese people they, they threaten the importance of the local predatories, local kings and queens, they opposed. They said, no, we will fight for the freedom of our country. Rani Abbaka Devi, and she fought two times. The queen of Ullala, Ullala is in South Kendra, that attached to the sea area uh, near Mangaluru fort. And there they wanted to defeat her. They brought, uh, uh, I mean, hundreds of uh, soldiers there, but she did not budge an inch. She did not care for them. And she said, we will not surrender our freedom. We will be free, independent country. And they wanted their, uh, her to pay the tributes to them. Again, she, she said no. Then they came in the army, in the big ship army, but she defeated the uh, Portugal armada two times. And the news spread to Iran and Shah of Iran in, her court, in his court. The king said, here is a Jaina lady called Rani Abbaka Devi who defeated a great uh, Portugal army, what a great lady. In his court, another Italian traveler was sitting there. He heard the name and fame of this Jaina lady, and he said, uh, uh, Pietro della Valle was his name, Pietro della Valle. He traveled all the way all the way from Iran to India, and then he came to Ullal to see this Jaina lady. And he has written in his travelogue, the, a small country, a compact, concise country, but this Jaina lady was very strong, bold lady. She defended her kingdom. This is, see, we should be proud of these histories. Well, it makes us how important Jaina women, even in the battlefield, they, they were not hesitant, you know. So such things should give courage to the modern, um, even men should be inspired uh, going through the history of the women, how courageous and how they could rise to the occasion, whether it is business or taking the um, welfare of the family, whether it is a joint family or whatever it is, or even going abroad, women, they did not hesitate. And, well, whether it is in America or England, everywhere, wherever the Jaina family has settled, women are cooperating, extending their full cooperation to the men. Come on, we will meet any challenge. Uh, so yes. uh, it is Thank very you. relevant to the modern yeah. world. Yeah. Thank um, you, Professor. I think, you know, um, you know, both at a personal level, uh, you know, a lot of my Jain uh, religion uh, is, uh, you know, attributable to women, uh, be it my grandmother, be it my mother, my mother-in-law, and even my grandmother's, you know, mother. I think it's the women who have largely sort of inspired that. A couple of quick questions. So, you know, Rani uh, Abakka Chauta sort of followed the matrilineal system, right? Which is why when she became queen, she was the head of the household. Uh, today, we are largely following the patrilineal system. And um, even if we look at the Jain Dharam, while we have had queens in the past, today we are seeing that the Acharyas are always male, right? So do you envision in, in, in history, has there ever been a scenario where the leader of the Jain sect was a woman, just like how the two queens that you described were leaders on the political and on the kingdom side. Yes, you have drawn my attention to another important aspect of the role of women, you see. Uh, I should 
remember Hemachandra Acharya on this occasion. Kali Yuga Sarvajna Hemachandra Acharya who lived almost uh, 92 years. Uh, he was born in 1088 and he died in 1172. But during the course of his long life, he was uh, the royal teacher uh, for the uh, king ruling during that period. And particularly Lokapala, he became converted to Jainism because of the Hemachandra Acharya. I will give one very, very inspiring uh, incident that took place during his period. King asked this Hemachandra Acharya, Hemachandra Suri, he had written so many books and his influence on the entire Gujarat is so much even today, you know, a university is named after him. And one day that King asked Hemachandra Suri, took him to the Somanatha, very famous Somanatha temple. He wanted to test our, his Guruji and he asked Acharya Ji, Suri Ji, please recite a poem about the glory of Somanatha. And then immediately, spontaneously, he recited a Sanskrit verse and he said, well, God Somanatha, you are Vishnu, you are Brahma, you are Jina also, like that. And the king was highly pleased. And then he asked the Acharya, what shall I give? And Acharya Hemachandra Acharya told him, please note this. It's very important, of historical importance. Acharya said, I am a sannyasi, I am a monk, what do I want from you? But in your kingdom, you have a rule that wherever in the families, if the son is not there, a male issue is not there, you take away the property of that family to the kingdom. Hereafter, don't do it. Even if the daughter is there, a female issue is there, property should go to them. King agreed and then proclaimed an order whether there is a daughter or a son, that property should go to that family, our king will not interfere in the order of the family. The credit of this goes to him, Chandra Acharya. See how he saved the families, how he saved the women from the torture of the property being taken away by the king means what should they do? How, how can they lead a happy life? This a monk of the stature of the Amachandra Acharya, who is considered as the Kali Yuga Sarvajna, omniscient of the modern age. And if we look at the history of the um, Gujarat and Jainism, uh, Jainism has played a prominent role. Similarly, if we come to the South, here also it has played a prominent role. And if we think of the history of Mahatma Gandhiji, you know, Mahatma Gandhiji, in shaping the life of Mahatma Gandhiji, two important Jaina persons we should remember on this occasion. One is Srimad Raichanji, Srimad Rajachandra or Raichanji, who just lived for only 34 years, but by birth he was a great saint, you know. His um, influence on Mahatma Gandhiji was so much. When Mahatma Gandhiji was in the South Africa, well, at one stage, he felt that he should give up Hinduism and join either Jainism or Christianity or Islam. And he wrote to his master, his guru, his teacher, Raichanji, where should I go? He asked me. His letter, this question was, where should I go? Right in the immediately wrote, stay where you are. If Raichandji were to tell him that change the faith and live up Hinduism, give up Hinduism and join some other community, you would have done. We would have lost a great Mahatma Gandhiji. But it is Raichandji, a Jaina monk. He was not a monk, but he lived the life of a monk. He was a businessman. He was dealing with the pearls and jewels. He was a Jawari business uh, doing, but he had achieved the great spiritual master he had become. 
Therefore, Srimad Raichanji told Mahatma Gandhiji not to give up Hinduism and we, well, we could achieve under his leadership, under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhiji, our freedom. And similarly, Srimad Raichanji, Raichanji is very important, Raichand Raghavachand Gandhi, Raichand Raghavachand Gandhi, who also participated in the year 893 in the Parliament of World Religions at Chicago, which took place, where Vivekananda became a famous figure, a famous monk in the history of the world, you know. His contemporary and Raichandji, that uh, uh, Raghava, Srimad Raichand Raghava Gandhi, he participated in the same event. He was a good friend of Vivekananda. Be before Vivekananda spoke on, spoke on the occasion in the year 1893 in the World Parliament, it is first that uh, Raichand Gandhi spoke and he gave, uh, he, he stayed there in America for two years and in England two years, he went to Germany also. He delivered 552 talks he delivered 552 speeches on the importance of global importance of Zionism. And Very nice. So in Mumbai, uh, yeah, since so in the interest of time, one last question for today evening before we wrap this up is, uh, are there any women in leadership positions who have helped to promote Jainism in the last few years or last few decades or last few centuries? So are there any women in leadership positions who have helped to promote Jainism? I think there are, there are not many, not many, but there are important women whose name right now, um, I, may, I may not remember or recollect uh, uh, because of my uh, deterioration in my memory, you know, uh, I'm, I'm 84 now. But that's a, that's a different thing. But in the North also, women have played a prominent role, particularly from Gujarat, I think. Uh, Gujarat ladies are uh, um, very, very, very important, uh, highly educated and very courageous. They rose to the occasion, whether it is the question of uh, freedom. For that matter, um, Mahatma Gandhi's wife, she was highly influenced by uh, the Jainism. And when Mahatma Ji went to Africa, well, he invited the Jaina monk and then uh, he preached, uh, told Mahatma Gandhi Ji to strictly follow the vegetarianism. Today, the global is facing, you know, the corona is disturbing. Um, people are very pan panicky. The whole world is shivering um, and, um, corona. But now, doctors are telling, give up non-vegetarianism, take up vegetarianism, look at the Jaina people, they are strong, they are healthy because of their food habits. The food habit of the Jainism has been the model. And to save, uh, look at the Mukhapatti, now the whole world is becoming Jain, so wearing the Mukhapatti. Eh? Right. Let us not take it as a joke. It is very important to save ourselves from the terrible disease which is threatening the entire mankind. Uh, look at the color of the globe. Everywhere it is dotted with a red color. Let us hope Jainism will come as a rescue. It will be a great medicine and will be a relief. Therefore, the importance of Jainism to the modern world, to the 20th, 21st and 22nd century. So it cannot be exaggerated. Not because we are Jains, we are speaking about Jainism. It's not like that. Jainism is the good medicine for the health and happiness of the world. Thank you. Uh, Professor, one more question that is coming from the audience is um, asking which books uh, or Vedas uh, to refer 
uh, if one wants to understand the scientific principles of the Jain religion. Please repeat. Which book, which book or which Vedas should one read to understand the scientific principles of Jainism? Ah. Well, it's a very serious uh, question and serious topic. Great Acharyas have written very, very many important books. Uh, they have, all of them have not been translated. It is necessary, much of our prime or very important text be translated to English. We not, need not be biased and restrict ourselves to our mother tongue alone, the regional vernacular language. Now, a lot of changes have taken place. And then Jainism in the 22nd, 21st century, 20th century, 21st century, since last three decades, Jainism is picking up like anything. Since I have given lectures in not less than 28 countries and participated in several international conferences, I find people are scholars of any religion, Christianity or any other religion, they are eager to know more and more about Jainism. Now is the time for the youngsters of Jainism who are staying in foreign countries and who are very fluent in English. They should take up this as a challenge and as an opportunity and translate very basic text to English so that those who have settled there, they can also our sustain our language and uh, it can flourish and those who are eager to know much about our community our philosophy and our rituals we can help them by preparing very important text now one professor padmana vijayani who has settled there in america in the california berkeley university he has written very important books one is Collected Papers on Jainism, published by Motilal Banarsidas. It's a very good book, N not biased to any particular sect. And then the Jaina Path of Purification. The Jaina Path of Purification is another book. And Paul Dandas. Paul Dandas has written a book on Jainism. The title itself is Jainism. It has already undergone um, revised edition, he has brought out two editions and uh, some more scholars they are publishing and then the Jaina Center is there in London University where Peter Flugel is uh, the professor and head of the department. They conduct every year the workshop and top scholars from all over the world, they are invited to give lectures and special lectures are also, workshop are also arranged. So, um, Jainism is the religion for 21st and 22nd century. Whole world will be eager to know more and more about Jainism and our contribution should also be there to make it and flourish. This is the religion, this will be the religion of um, modern world. Great. Um, thank you for those uh, book recommendations, uh, Professor. Uh, one more thing is, why is the Acharya post, uh, you know, not given to Shamanis? Any, 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 what was the question? Yeah. Uh, professor, the question is, why is the Acharya post not given to Shamanis, uh, to the female nuns? Why is it only given to the male? Very difficult to answer. Very difficult to answer. But I think um, Malli is the one of the Tirthankaras and according to Shwetambara, um, that's very important. That should be the model. And we should come out of our, you see, uh, we should not be very rigid. We should be radical. We should be radical. The more the radical our Acharyas become, more will be the more will be the importance of Jainism, you know. Uh, Shamani should 
be given the opportunity. She should be placed on the equal equal tree. Uh, Acharya, I I I agree. Uh, well, uh, I am not a, I, in a position to say, but I plead for women. They deserve it. Somebody, one of the somebody's the deserving somebody's qualified somebody's are there. I have seen in in um, uh, Rajasthan that Acharya Tulsi's institute is they know uh, there so many somebody's far highly educated than any one of us. When when they are progressive and in America also they are there, therefore they should be given the Acharya post to women and not one or two, many of them. If they, I, I am eager to see before my death, I want to see one of the Samanis becomes the Acharya. I, I, and I will salute her. I, um, it, it should be a high time. The time has come when the Acharya should, Acharya ship should be extended to the Samanis also. Uh, Professor, there are more than 94 people, you know, watching this uh, video session live. Uh, more than half of them are women. What advice do you have for the women listening to you? I am, I am happy that they have um, been kind enough to listen to my talk. You see, I should say, I am, whatever I am today, I am grateful to my mother. It is my mother who shaped me. It is my mother who has influenced me. Similarly, in every family, if some boy is very bright, the credit should go to the mother. Credit should go to the woman. So if women are not, I tell you, the parents who have daughters, they are the luckiest people. Parent, parents who have sons, no, no, I am not against them, but we should give importance to the women. You know, there I am always um, because my sisters, my mother, my auntie, in every family. I'm, I'm, if I am speaking about my family, it means I am speaking about the all families. So if the women are given opportunities to lead the country like Indira Gandhi and others, you know, in politics, if, if one day a woman of the Dina community becomes the prime minister of India, no. It will be possible. I, I expect that to happen. And similarly, uh, the Acharya should, Acharya ship should be extended to the Samanis. Let us hope in, during our lifetime, we will be able to see them and we will be able to pay our respects to them. Um, Professor, what was the percentage of the population that was Jain in historical times? Uh, and you know, today we are down to less than one or two percent of the population as gens um, for the Jain, next fifty yes. to hundred years. No, Jainism is not a religion to uh, think of. Uh, well, increasing the population, it is based on principles, and it did not spread uh, throughout the world like Buddhism because of its restrictions, uh, it, a, a rigid food system, you know, uh, the vegetarianism um, did not compromise. Jaina Acharyas did not compromise. I think it's not the number that is important. Everybody, if he comes to know about Jainism, he salutes because we, it is based on our the spiritual way of life. Jainism is not just philosophy. It is the way of life. It is everyday life, you know. Therefore, Jainism has a great future. Jainism has a great future. And the more we think about our uh, ancient history, the more we are confident that it has a bright future. The future is ours. The future is Jainism. And the future is glorious. Thank you, Professor. On those uh, very, very inspiring words, I want to thank you for you know, all of the wonderful knowledge that you have imparted to us, the book recommendations, the history of the two queens, uh, the difference between the multiple sex uh, of Jainism, uh, the role of women and you know, a, a dream to have a women Acharya in the future. 
many, many thanks to you. I uh, really appreciate for the last one hour. And uh, I, I thank you for your time. Ramesh ji? I, I, should, I should also thank my dear friend Ramesh. You know, he has always inspired me and continues to inspire me. Thank you, Professor. It's so nice of you to accept the invitation at a very short notice. Please, please, I really please, appreciate please, you. You did call please, me. Please give me two days time. Please, all I, those I, who are listening, please, all those who are listening, please bless me. Please bless me. Jai Janendra. Jai Janendra. Thank you so much, Professor. I just wanted to mention one thing, Professor. I, I'm I'm really grateful and honored to know you, and you have you have accepted. Uh, this at a very short notice, in spite of your health has been not been very good. You did told me that you, you have some issues of memory, but I can say you, you have a memory of 18 years, even with the year, uh, what you mentioned, exactly everything. I don't think your memory is fading. And I'm sure all the participants will appreciate that. I would like you to address once again with probably another subject. I also want to mention, uh, as you mentioned, Motilal Banarasi Das, uh, uh, JP Jain is today one of the attendees. He requested me to be participant in this. Durlab Jai requested. So I'm really mm -hmm. grateful that when you mentioned uh, Motilal uh, Banarasi Das, he's one of the attendees here uh, <laughs> today. As, uh, his name is JP Jain. Uh, and thank you, JP Jain, to uh, participate. Um, uh, thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm.